Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome everyone. Welcome to the Freehold Regional High School District Virtual College Fair. We have an awesome lineup of organizations and colleges and universities for you to hear from this evening. But before I turn it over to them, I have a couple of housekeeping items for you all. Number one, this is a webinar, so your camera and your microphones are off, so our panelists cannot see or hear you this evening. Secondly, this is a really fun format to learn about colleges, institutions, and organizations in, in, a, in a short amount of time. So if you enjoy this format, which I know that you will, sign up for more sessions. There's a whole nother hour after this, so I hope that you'll sign up for some more sessions. This is being recorded tonight, and so all the recordings, including this one, will be available within one week at strivescan.com slash F-R-H-S-D. Um, we know you're gonna have some questions tonight and our panelists wanna make sure that you have the opportunity to get those questions answered. So at any time you have questions, put those in the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen. You don't have to wait for a particular college or organization to present before asking questions. So just go ahead and put those in there, but do note um, the institution or uh, that you're directing your question to so that our panelists can answer appropriately. And finally, this is a six by six, which means that every institution has only six short minutes um, to share great information about their institution. And so we hope that it's just enough so that you'll wanna do some more research. So having said that, I would like to turn it over to our first presenter. Um, up first, you're gonna get to hear from Virto Education. Take it away, Lainey, whenever you're ready. Awesome, thank you so much. I love your enthusiasm, it's very refreshing. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. I've got a cool little slideshow for y'all. Okay, so Virto Education, we are a little bit different than traditional universities and colleges that you guys have um, been learning about and talking to. So what Virto is, we are actually a first semester or a first full year of college, but you're traveling around to different countries, so you're traveling abroad. So we are a fully accredited college semester abroad. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play this. It's only 30 seconds. It's a pretty cool little video. All right. So Virto, our overall mission as an organization is to provide more students, regardless of background or location or plans post Virto, um, with the opportunity to get access to higher education and international travel. We believe in the power of both of those things to really change people and to change the future. Um, so that is broken down into three main pillars. The first is the best first year of college. The second is admissions to a great fit school. So we actually partner with 60 universities and I'll talk about that in just a sec. And the third pillar is um, covering the tuition of our semesters. So the best first year of college can mean something different for everybody, for sure. Um, when you're looking at Virto's semesters, those really boil down to three main points. Um, so they're the three on the screen here. So the first one is connecting to the world. So with our students and our semesters, we're really trying to make this a super unique um, and realistic experience. So we're, we're not having our students traveling around like tourists. Um, we really want to build a connection between community and our students and that experience um, while they're in these countries, in these locations. Um, so really just immersing themselves in the, the local, you know, cultures, traditions, um, understanding the history and the global issues of where they're staying and living and learning. So on the note of learning, we are a college semester, so we are academic. Um, students are taking four to five college classes. Um, it's up to you to pick which courses you want to take. We have a really big course load, um, but you're earning 16 credits per semester. They're those freshman general education credits, so it's really great for students regardless of major. 
Um, we do focus on discussion based classes as opposed to um, like looking at, you know, tests and exams and all of that stuff and just, you know, trying to absorb information out of a book. Um, we are experiential learning. So really trying to bring that learning outside of the classroom as much as possible. We have small class sizes, 20 to 25 students. You're being taught by Virto professors. Um, when you're with Virto on one of our semesters, um, this is a really awesome time to do some deep diving and discover your interests, your passions. Uh, we have a life skills and a um, college readiness seminar that are weaved into all of our semesters, as well as a purpose finding workshop as well. So um, you're really going to hit the ground running when you're finished with our semesters, um, whether you're going to a college campus or going to work or um, yeah, regardless of where you're going. So our two different types of semesters, we have six offerings in total. Three of them are what we call on campus. So these are all in Europe. They're in England, um, Italy, and Spain. So you're in London, Milan, and Madrid. So these courses, um, these semesters are pretty typical in a lot of ways to a traditional study abroad. So you're living in a student residence with other Virto students, you're commuting to class, you have that um, typical like morning afternoon class time structure, and you have that free time on the weekends and evenings to do traveling around by yourself. Um, this course selection listed in here is actually much larger. Um, this slide just needs to be updated and I haven't gotten around to it, but you can find all of that on our website. Um, this is a couple of the excursions that we do in London. This is just a great example of what these um, campus semesters look like. So we are going to be doing stuff as a group, of course, um, but you still do have that independence. The field semesters are the last three semesters that we offer. So this type is um, a lot less traditional. So these semesters are in Costa Rica, Hawaii, and Fiji. So just for an example, um, same thing with the course selection, it's actually much bigger, but you're gonna be staying in um, base houses with a group of 20 students and your program leaders and Verto professors. And we're traveling to a different location every month. Um, so with these, they're very different in a lot of ways. Um, the biggest thing is that we're staying in smaller towns and rural villages as opposed to big cities. Uh, we do have a full year change the world honors program. Um, second pillar admissions to a great fit school. So when you're applying to Verta, we're a free application. We have a 2.5 minimum um, and we're non-binding. You can simultaneously apply to up to five of our partner schools for free. Um, this is just a few of them. The full list is on the website. Definitely recommend it. Um, it's a great opportunity to get admissions decision from awesome schools. Last but not least, uh, affordability. We aim to be as affordable as a four-year college. Um, so our semesters are 15 to 25,000, um, including three meals a day and lodging. We do accept federal financial aid and other institutional aid. Thank you so much. Um, definitely check us out on our Instagram or our website, and I'll put that information in the chat box. Lainey, thank you so much to you and Virto Education. Next up, I'd like to introduce to you Western Colorado University. Take it away whenever you're ready. Perfect. Thank you so much, Courtney. Hello, everybody. My name is Alejandro Alejandre. Yes, that's a little difference. No, I do not have two first names or last names. I go by Alex, though. I'm a regional director of recruitment for Western Colorado University, a four-year public liberal arts institution that's located in the horse of the Rocky Mountain in Gunnison, Colorado. Uh, we serve over 3,000 students, 3,400, so 3,000 of, of them being undergraduate, 400 graduate students. Now, we are located, like I mentioned, in Gunnison, Colorado. Just to get a little bit of perspective, we are about four hours south of Denver, so kind of like in the southwest corner of Colorado, we are surrounded in so much beauty. I mean, we're surrounded by Crested View, which is about 30 minutes north of town. Uh, Crested View is kind of your typical, I wouldn't say your typical mountain town that has been taken by tourists, but I'll be honest, it is kind of like a tourist attraction. There's a lot of gift shops, there's a lot of restaurants. Um, there's, there's a lot of restaurants, a lot of things to do up there. You can ski and snowboard, which is actually a big attraction for other students out Western. You can also mountain bike, hike, fly fish, there's a lot of things to do up there. Uh, we also have Harmons, which is about five miles south of town. It is the largest, uh, the largest recreational area in Colorado. It's over 8,000 acres, and students, that's, that's where your outdoor activities will take place. So rock climbing, a mountain biking, hiking, if you have a dirt bike, you can ride there. There's a shooting range. A lot of the clubs out western will actually host campfires there all the time. And then we also have Blue Mesa, which is about 10 miles west of town. It is the largest body of water in Colorado. It's over 20 miles long. 
and that's where your water activities will take place. So boating, paddle boarding, fishing, ice fishing, or you can have a carne asada, and that's barbecue on a hot Saturday evening, Dali hit the spot. So we also have Monarch Mountain, which is about 42 minutes east of town. So you're in between, in between two famous ski resorts. Uh, like I said, we're surrounded by so much beauty in a way you call a rather adventure things to do. Now, like I mentioned, we are a four year public liberal arts institution. We offer over a hundred areas of studies, top majors, I would say business, biology, I would say actually anything with outdoors. We're surrounded by 1.7 million acres of public land. So anything with the outdoors, like wildlife, biology, environmental sustainability, recreation, outdoor education, I would say that's our bread and butter. But we also, like, like I said, some of the majors that we that are big on our campus is business, computer science, exercise sports science, um, education, we're actually found in education. And we actually got gifted about $80 million to be like computer science and mechanical engineering. So like I said, that's something we are offering at the moment. Um, there's a lot of things to do. Average class sizes, 17, 70% of the classes are taught by full-time faculty and 71% of those professors have terminal degrees. So you're getting taught from someone that's an expert in the field and someone that's fully dedicated to your education. Now, we are fully dedicated to, to your success, just like any of my peers on this presentation. Some of the examples of we, some of the, the resources that we offer is an academic advisor. Each student will be assigned an academic advisor in their field. That advisor will guide you from your first year to your last year at Western, making sure you're doing well, making sure you can, there's things that you can take advantage of and all those um, those type of things. Uh, we offer a math and writing center, uh, and we also have a disability services as well. So if you need any resource, um, to excel in the classroom, you will just need to talk to them and they'll provide those resources for you. Uh, like I mentioned, there's always something going on, not just off campus, but also on campus. We have over 50 clubs and organizations, student like clubs, the students want to see happen and all that they can make it happen, which is proposed that yet student government. So student government allocates over $350,000 on all the clubs at Western. So there is always, like I mentioned, something going on. You have your academic class run in conjunction with an academic program, and then you have your passion and, and interest uh, clubs. Um, now, tuition and costs for tuition for ISA is going to be over $18,000. That's definitely below the national average. 80% of the students receive top of eight, some type of aid, and then 100% of the students are considered for merit aid. So, like I said, our merit scholarships are upon acceptance, and they go off your cumulative GPA. That's the only thing we're going off now. We were test optional this year, and we're going to be test optional moving forward. So, like I said, those merit scholarships will be just uh, uh, will be awarded on just your GPA. Um, and those scholarships, like I said, they range from eight to $10,000, as you can see on the screen. A renewable scholarship, you'll be awarded all four years as long as you maintain that GPA of 2.75. So those scholarships will definitely play a big chunk of our tuition. And now, how to apply to, to, uh, to Western? You can apply to the Western application. You can, you can apply to the Western uh, through the common application. If you do decide to apply to the common application, make sure you send us your transcripts. If you do decide to apply to the Western application, we'll need your transcript and there is an application fee of $30. You can call the missions office, you can reach out to me and I can give you that promo code to waive that fee. Uh, we are currently uh, still accepting applications for fall 2021. Like I said, definitely reach out to me and I can give you that promo code to waive that fee. If you're below our 50 percentile, I'll strongly recommend submitting any material that will help support your application. Everything you provide for us, we'll definitely look at. Um, one of the biggest things I would strongly recommend is visiting campus. I know even with COVID, it's pretty hard, but make sure you try to get on the campus, either virtually or in person. Western is currently hosting in-person visits. We're probably one of a few schools in Colorado at the moment. Uh, those visits run Monday through Friday and Saturday upon request. Um, like I said, they have an information session, a campus tour, and then if you want me with a coach or professor, whoever, I'm, whoever it might be, we can definitely make those arrangements as well. Now, if you can't make it on campus, that's totally fine. We do have a lot of virtual events on going on right now and in summer as well. So you can go to western.edu forward slash recruitment events to check those events out. Um, my contact information is on this slide. If there's anything I can help you with, regardless if it's about Western or just going to college, please reach out to me. I'm just here to be another resource for you guys. Thank you so much for your time. And I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the presentations. Alex, thank you so much to you and Western Colorado University audience. Don't forget, you can put those questions in the Q&A at any time. Next, I'd like to introduce to you Arizona State University. Sarah, take it away whenever you're ready. Thank you so much. All right. Hi, everyone. Good evening. My name is Sarah. I am the Mid-Atlantic Recruitment Coordinator for Arizona State University. I am based just down in southeastern Virginia, so super excited to be spending time with you today. 
So we are a very large university. Um, we're spread across the Metro Phoenix area. Um, as you can see on our map here, we do have four campus locations, which I'll touch on a little bit in the next slide. But for now, I want to talk about uh, the city of Phoenix. Phoenix is a very exciting city to spend your college career in. It's actually the fifth largest city in the country, which I didn't know prior to working for ASU. Um, but what that means is there's a lot of opportunities for students. All of the Fortune 500 companies that are located in Arizona are located in Phoenix. There's a lot going on in the area. Um, it's also a really great place for outdoor rec if you're into hiking or paddle boarding down at Tempe Town Lake, biking, you name it. Um, another benefit of being in Phoenix is obviously the weather. Um, average temperature throughout the year is about 75 degrees. Uh, summers can get hot, not gonna lie. You're looking at triple digits for the summer, but at that time, a lot of students will be heading back home to hopefully some cooler weather. Uh, so there's a lot to do in the, um, the city of Phoenix. So as I mentioned before, we do have four campus locations. So the campus that you are housed at is gonna be dictated by your major. So I'll talk a little bit specifically to each of these campuses and give you some common degrees or programs that you might find at these um, campuses. So first up, we have downtown Phoenix. This is right smack downtown Phoenix. Um, it's in a very metropolitan area of the city. Popular programs at our downtown campus would be journalism, health sciences like nursing, nutrition, community and public health, um, criminal justice, and our law school is also um, at our downtown Phoenix campus as well. This is our second largest location with just under 12,000 students. Next up, we have the Polytechnic campus. This is more of our hands-on technical campus. So think a lot of a lot more uh, hands-on engineering programs. This is also where our flight and aviation students study. The Polytechnic campus is actually an old Air Force base. So this is where our fleet of planes are. We are right next to a regional airport. So this is where our flight students will be getting those flight hours to become a pilot. Third, we have the Tempe campus, which is probably the campus you're most familiar with. When you think of ASU, you probably think of Tempe. It's our largest by far with over 52,000 students, has the majority of our degree programs, our division one athletics, our Greek community. Um, so this is where a lot of students tend to gravitate to just because of the number of degree programs and the number of students there. Tempe definitely has more of that uh, kind of classic college town feel. Popular programs at Tempe are anything in the liberal arts and sciences, business, engineering, education, performing arts. Um, so there's a lot of variety at Tempe. And fourth, we have the West Campus, which is our smallest of our four. And this kind of has more of a liberal arts feel. It's very small, it's very intimate, and it's actually very green, which I was not expecting um, to see a really green campus in the middle of Phoenix. Um, but popular programs here would be some of our more interdisciplinary majors, as well as forensic science and our Thunderbird School of Global Management. So if your major is offered at multiple campus locations, this is where you as a student can kind of customize your experience and pick a campus that might be the best fit for you and for what you're looking for. No two experiences at ASU really look identical. So there's a lot of ways to customize that experience and to make it your own. Since we are such a large university and there's a lot going on in terms of majors and campuses and students, uh, helping students find community is definitely really important to us. There are a lot of ways to get involved, over a thousand student clubs and activities. We um, are a big school for athletics as well. So that's what a lot of students will do in their free time. Sporting events are free for all sports, um, uh, for home games for students to attend. Another big way we create community is through our residence halls. It is expected that first year students live on campus and we actually house students based on their academic college. So business students will be living with other business students, engineering with other engineering students. So this kind of shrinks down that campus community a little bit, helps you meet uh, some peers that might be in your major or your classes or at the very least your academic college to start making those connections really early. So if all of that sounds good or maybe a little bit interesting, let's talk about how you can become a Sun Devil. We have a very transparent admission uh, process called a shirt admission. So if you are meeting our admission criteria, you're guaranteed to be admitted into the university. These are the things that we look for on the left. You can see what we call course competency requirements. These are the courses that we look to see if you've taken them in high school. 
If you're checking off all these boxes, you've taken all 16 of these courses and you're meeting one of the requirements on the right, you are guaranteed admission into Arizona State. So we like accessibility and transparency. So you should be able to look at this now and see if you would be admissible. If you're falling below any of these, that's okay. We don't turn you away. You'll just go through a more um, in-depth individual review process. So in addition to this quick six minute session, we have a lot of visit opportunities for you to engage a little bit more with ASU. I can also take individual phone or Zoom appointments. I am your admissions rep. So definitely reach out to me. There's my email and I am super excited to connect with you and go Devils. Sarah, thanks so much to you and Arizona State University. Wow, I know you guys have enjoyed the presentation so far. We've heard three, but we still have three great ones to go. Um, I'm gonna turn it over to Joe from um, University of Arizona to take it away. Thanks, Joe. Thank you so much, Courtney. And thank you all for sticking around to learn a little bit more about some of these great schools. My name is Joe Elliott. I'm the Associate Director of our National Recruitment Team at the University of Arizona. I'm one of our regional-based employees. I do live in New Jersey uh, year-round, born and raised, um, uh, just about an hour north of y'all. And I really wanna just talk a little bit more about Arizona as a university. Um, but before we do that, I wanna to talk to you about where we're located. So we are located in sunny Tucson, which is about two hours south of Phoenix, about one hour north of the US-Mexican border. Tucson is the second largest city in the state of Arizona with about half a million Tucsonians. So it is a pretty diverse and fun population. When you're thinking about getting to Tucson, uh, unfortunately there is not one single direct flight from Newark or Philly, um, but there are some options in terms of connections. So you could always fly into Denver or Chicago. My favorite way is to Houston and then directly down into Tucson. Uh, but a lot of students will ultimately choose to just fly directly into Phoenix because there is a variety of flights and options uh, and then take a shuttle. And what's great about the shuttle is it's going to be filled with other Wildcats. So you'll not be uh, really commuting down by yourself. And that shuttle goes directly from Phoenix Sky Harbor uh, directly to the corner of our campus. So it is definitely easy to get to. Um, and it's fun because there's always a lot of Wildcats heading down to Tucson from our area. When you're thinking about where students come from in the Mid-Atlantic region, um, New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, those are our big states out here on the East Coast. Uh, so New Jersey typically sends about 100 students every year. Uh, New York sends about 125. Pennsylvania is about 75. So most of our students are coming from our area. Um, so you will not be alone when you get out to Tucson. As a, as a school, um, we were the first university in the state of Arizona. We are the land grant university for the state. We're a large size school, it's about 36,000 undergraduates and typically take about 7,500 students per year at the University of Arizona. We're also diverse, it's about 48% diverse. And when you're thinking about retention rates as a large university, we do a pretty good job of really ensuring that you feel successful in your first year and you're gonna return for your second year. So it's about 85% of our first year students return for a second year. Some nice things to know, we are one single campus. So everything and anything you need, it's on one property. So it's easy to get around in Tucson. As you can see from this picture, it's pretty flat. Um, it's also sunny, so it's nice to walk around our green campus. When you're thinking about opportunities for education, we have about 20 unique colleges on our campus. We're also one of the only universities in the country that has two separate teaching hospitals. One's located directly on our campus and the second one is located in downtown Phoenix. Our campus has 23 separate dorms, over 300 majors to choose from. So programs like Eller College of Management, which is a top 20 ranked business program in the United States is located on our campus. Our College of Agriculture and Life Sciences is one of our oldest colleges on campus. And our College of Sciences are largest in terms of majors offered for students. We're also the only member of the Association of American Universities in the state of Arizona. What the AAU is, is a collection of private and public universities throughout North America. So schools like Princeton, Harvard, Yale, University of Arizona, all make up this exclusive membership in AAU. This gives us a little bit more opportunity in terms of offering research to our students. So as a tier one research university, we do about $740 million worth of research a year, which is more than any other school in the state. And those research opportunities are available for all of our students. And what's great, it's about 70% of undergraduate research that's done is paid research. 
We are a big school, as I mentioned, but what's nice is we pay a lot of attention to our student experience. So our faculty to student ratio, it's about 15 to one, and 70% of all classes at the University of Arizona have less than 30 kids. I would say on average, most classes are anywhere between 20 to 29 students. Also, one of the amazing things is the resources that we afford our students. So we have a program called the SALT Center at the University of Arizona. It's the Strategic Alternate Learning Technique Center. So this is a standalone academic support program where we have students apply into. And when they're in the program, the SALT program, they actually have the opportunity to work with a learning specialist up to 30 minutes per week every week. This is a great opportunity to kind of reassure yourself in terms of staying on task in your coursework. SALT students also have access to learning um, to certified, certified tutors that they are able to meet with up to two hours per week every week. We're also very excited this year to announce that we've already decided to go without any ACT or SAT scores for both our admissions and merit considerations. And our top merit award exceeds upwards of $35,000 per year. We also offer a guaranteed tuition plan, which is fixed at about $36,600 for this upcoming fall. Our fall application is opening up on July 1st. We are rolling admissions. So all you have to do is go to our website, submit your application. And once you're done with your application, you'll get your decision probably back by August 16th. We're a member of the PAC-12. We have over 600 clubs at the University of Arizona, 320 days of sunshine, the best 23 miles of Mexican food in the country, Majority of our classes are going back to in-person and we finally started offering in-person tours. I'll throw my information in the chat box and thank you guys so much for sticking around to learn a little bit more about the University of Arizona. So thanks so much to you and the University of Arizona. Our next presentation tonight will be from San Diego State University. Danielle, take it away whenever you're ready. Good evening, everybody, and thanks for hanging in with me tonight. My name is Danielle Toglia, and I re represent San Diego State University. It's my pleasure to join you. Um, like Joe, I am regionally based in New Jersey, my home state. And so obviously, if you are a student who is joining us tonight, I would be more than happy to have conversation with you after this evening, if in fact SDSU uh, remains on your list. We are located in beautiful San Diego, California, which is the second largest city in California. If you can imagine, obviously, based on the pictures in front of you, the campus is quite aesthetically pleasing. The weather, the weather is really stunning almost every day of the year. And so students really are afforded the opportunity to take advantage of the campus and the outdoors um, you know, quite, quite often, um, which has been really nice for us in this past year, as you can imagine, given the pandemic. Um, the campus boasts an outdoor swimming pool, a koi pond, a football stadium, um, residential halls, state-of-the-art classroom space, um, a, a wonderful student center, which you see behind you. So it's a, it's a really very pretty campus, but also very easy to get around the campus. The campus is about a 25 minute walk from end to end. So it's very easy to get from place to place. There's no need for anything perhaps other than walking, maybe a skateboard or a bike, um, but you can get from place to place really easily. You can also take advantage of the sites in San Diego by obviously taking advantage of our trolley. Our trolley goes downtown. You have wonderful access to 70 miles of coastline beach, mountains, deserts, and biking trails and hiking trails. You're very close to amenities and shops, um, restaurants, et cetera. It's a very diverse place to live and learn. Um, and I always mention that to students. With 30,000 undergraduate students, it's also a very large place. But I do encourage students to think about the fact that we can't make a small place larger, but we can make a large place smaller. So you have wonderful opportunities that obviously go hand in hand with the number of students on the campus. Obviously one of them being academic choices. The academic choices at the undergraduate level at SDSU are really astounding. We offer 197 undergraduate majors to choose from. And we have a variety of options. Everything from our Fowler College of Business to eight accredited uh, engineering programs, a school of education, which prepares students for elementary, secondary, or special education, a very, very popular school of health and human services, which includes our most competitive major in nursing, a school of professional studies and fine arts, 
which would include, again, one of our more popular majors in criminal justice, as well as our art, music, dance, and theater programs. And as well, of course, a school of arts and letters and sciences. So your traditional programs, perhaps the ones that as a high school student, you're most familiar with, right? English, mathematics, the sciences, the social sciences, languages. We also have about 450 students that apply and enroll every year in our undeclared school. So by all means, if you are not sure about a major, and I do refer to the school as undeclared, right? Not undecided. We know that you have varied passions and you're leaning in lots of different directions. So if indeed you do have varied passions and you do not wanna make a decision upon application, you can apply undeclared to the university. So please do take advantage of that option. We are a busy place. We actually rank 35th nationally for ethnic diversity, keeping in mind that diversity comes in lots of ways and shapes and forms. But we are, were founded as a Hispanic serving institution and a large majority of our students do speak a second language at the undergraduate level. We're also anxious to obviously send students abroad once again, as we do rank fifth in the nation, number one in California for the amount of students that study. And we have about 600 options to choose from. So there's a huge variety of places that you can travel to, obviously to study and learn more culturally, religiously and professionally from. Um, as well, of course, the institution offers you the ability to take advantage of research. As a research university last year, we gave away $148.5 million in research grant money. And we are going to encourage you very early in your academic career at SDSU to take advantage of career services so that you can think about applying what you're learning in the classroom, that knowledge into theory, that theory into knowledge and practice through a internship, a, a career services opportunity, or perhaps um, any of our courses that offer you the service learning component. Um, so please, please inquire about that if you do have questions or concerns. Our admission process is a little bit different than perhaps some other institutions. We have a self-reported application the application process is our own. It is part of the CSU, the California State University system. There are 23 campuses that make up this system, SDSU being of course one of them and the second largest with the 30,000 student undergraduate population. So you apply through the CSU. Some statistical data given our um, undergraduate GPA. I will mention that for next year, as well as for this year, we are test blind. What that means is that you do not submit your SAT or ACT score at all to us. So it's not an option um, because we don't look at it. We don't add it to your file for review. So there's no reason, save your pennies, uh, don't send your test score, but we will be looking at obviously other information. And part of that information obviously is your academic work, your undergraduate grade point average, your courses uh, in terms of rigor, and obviously the trend in those courses. So please keep in mind, we want you to be working hard. Uh, we want you to be um, you know, thinking about a major if you do have one in mind to progress in that direction. It's a busy place. We work hard, but we play hard. We have about 300 clubs and organizations. Our student government boasts a $20 million budget. They oversee both our athletic center, our recreation center, as well as our student um, offices and space on campus and our aquaplex, which is our outdoor swimming pool. We do have division one athletics club, sports and intramurals. It's a busy place. And we are quite residential with 7,000 students living on campus. So please, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions that you do have. Thank you, Courtney. Thanks, Danielle, to you and to, um, to, you, to San Diego State University. Now I'd like to introduce to you, um, University of California, Irvine. Michelle, take it away whenever you already. Yeah, thank you all so much. Thank you for joining us and sticking around this evening. Um, my name is Michelle Burns. I'm one of the regional admissions counselors for the University of California, Irvine. Like many of my colleagues tonight, I am also based out on the East Coast in New Haven, Connecticut, and I am your admissions counselor. So my email right there is the way that you can contact me at any point in time. So to tell you a little bit about the University of California, Irvine, first off, we are part of the University of California system. You heard from my colleague Danielle with San Diego State, and that's the Cal State University. So the University of California system is nine undergraduate institutions. We're considered the research branch of the state of California. Of the nine of us, five of us are ranked in the top 10 amongst all public universities in the country, and UCI is currently ranked number eight. 
a little about Irvine. So moving up a little bit from San Diego um, in the state, we are about 45-ish minutes south of LA, an hour-ish north of San Diego. That depends on two things who's driving and the traffic that day. Um, but we are located just 10 minutes from Newport Beach. It's a beautiful location. There's so many great things to do around the area. We also have 280 plus sunny days and a nice temperate climate. Um, so about 73 and sunny the majority of the year. For your parents and you all to know as well, Irvine is considered one of the safest cities in the country. Um, so when you're, send, you're coming out there or sending your students out there, just knowing that it is a really safe place to be, always being aware of campus safety as well. So some fun things to do in the area. We're in Orange County. Uh, our students definitely enjoy the outdoor life, whether it's going down to our boathouse on Balboa Peninsula and learning how to sail or stand up paddle boarding or going to Disneyland, which is just about 25 minutes away. We have lots of great ways to um, have you spend your time when you're not in class. A little bit about our academics. We have 14 different academic schools within uh, UCI. So you'll see them all here. It is not at all uncommon to hear a student at UCI that is wanting to major in biology, double major with history, and also wants to be part of a music group or a dance club on campus. So our students are very interdisciplinary. We definitely encourage you to explore. If you're not quite sure what you wanna do yet, feel free to apply into our undeclared program. You have time to decide what you want. We have a great director of our undeclared program who will help you make sure you're getting those classes and figure out all the things that you want to take as classes. Those all count towards your degree anyway, so you're never wasting time taking classes and figuring out the things that you're really passionate and excited about. We also have our faculty be interdisciplinary as well. So if you are in a class with a faculty member, there's a good chance that that class might be team taught or that they're working with faculty members in completely different departments. That also goes into our research and just how we function as a campus. We were built and designed in 1965. The city of Irvine was founded at the same time. Um, so it's actually a fun fact, the one you see where the city is named after us instead of vice versa. So when you're looking at um, UCI, as you city of Irvine, you'll notice that it looks very planned and deliberate, and that's because it's one of the first planned communities um, within the country. And we are designed in a circle, so I say we were designed in the 60s, they had to do something different, but it also really echoes how we um, feel on campus and the interdisciplinary nature of the campus. Your um, freshman year, you'll spend in one of these two first year housing complexes, either Middle Earth, which is named after Lord of the Rings, or Mesa Court Housing, and it's really easy for you to get around campus. You definitely don't need a car that first year on campus either. There's plenty of ways to get around. A little bit about our learning. We do believe in internships and projects-based learning. Irvine is home to about one third of all Fortune 500 companies in the country. Um, so there are a lot of great opportunities for you to be doing um, internships while you're in school. We're also a research university, as my friend Joe said and explained so well about uh, the AAU. We are also a member of the AAU. 73% of our undergraduate students do participate in research before they graduate. While you'll see one of the students here is involved in a lab, you can be a social science student, you can be a dance major as you see here, you can be a drama major or a psychology major and still be involved in some really exciting research on campus. You'll also see a lot of our co-curriculars like our Ant Eater Racing Program, students involved in study abroad or study away programs like our UCDC program, which is in partnership with all of our sister UC institutions. When you're graduating from UCI, you're also graduating from the University of California, which means you do have that UC name on your diploma. It's not only the UCI alum, but also the UC alum across those nine institutions that are part of your family now as well. When I ask students about UCI and to describe it in a couple words, one of the things that I hear is unique. One of the things I hear is collaborative. And one of the other things I hear is diverse. Students really seek us out for our diversity. We're both an Asian American and Pacific Islander and Native American uh, serving institution, as well as a Hispanic serving institution as well. So you can see the breakdown here of the background of our students. It's also really important to us to support our students, uh, no matter how they identify. So we have a really active LGBTQ resource center on campus. We do have a large international population on campus as well, and our international center. And then we want to keep
have our Learning and Academic Resource Center, Writing Center, and our Campus Health to support you in your mental and physical health needs as well. One last thing, of course, you need some fun activities on campus. So we are the Ant Eaters, uh, really fun uh, mascot, Peter the Ant Eater. Come learn more about him. We're a D1 school for sports. We also have an eSports program on campus, one of the, uh, the top ones in the country, and over 600 clubs and organizations. Last thing very quickly, one application for all the UCs. We are test free or test blind, um, which means we will not be using SAT or ACT scores to review your application. November 1st through 30th is the time that you can submit that. And we hope to learn more um, about you on that application. Feel free to take a picture and come to one of our weekly presentations. I'm happy to chat with you in a one-on-one. -on -one. Thanks. Michelle, thank you so much to you and the University of California, Irvine. Now I'd like to ask all of our um, presenters to turn back on their cameras. They are the experts and I would like them to be able to share their expertise with you all. Um, so we'll go around Robin in the same order that you presented. What advice would you give someone going through the college search process? So we'll start with Virto Education up first. Yeah, awesome. Um, I would say for those of you who are going through the college search process, um, don't be afraid to think outside of the box. Just because your best friend is going to a local college doesn't mean that's going to be the best fit for you. Um, definitely do some some research and, and don't feel restricted by um, other people. My tip of advice will be, golly, I got like so many, um, but the, the biggest one is make sure you apply for scholarships. I, I think that's the biggest thing. I mean, you are looking for your next home. So, you know, you gotta be happy with it, but it's also about how you're gonna pay for it. So make sure you're talking to all those uh, institutions and, you know, talking about their scholarships, what they offer, and also talk to your high school counselor. They're the ones who will be able to help you out with uh, applying for scholarships or lo local scholarships and any other financial opportunities. So apply for all the scholarship you can. Even though you apply for 50, you get one. That's something that you don't have to pay on later on, so. Yeah, my piece of advice would be start engaging with the universities that you're interested in early. I think something um, kind of a silver lining out of this pandemic is so much is virtual. And I know it's really hard to visit out of state uh, schools or across schools across the country. And so a lot of us have set up virtual information, information sessions, virtual student panels, virtual tours. We have virtual FAFSA nights. So definitely start um, engaging with those, registering for those just to learn a little bit more about the universities you're interested in that we can't fit in six minutes. I would agree. Ask questions now, that's what we're here for. Um, I always tell students it's great to set up a separate email just so that it all goes to one place. And then I also say it's really important to check your email too. Um, but honestly, you know, think about all the schools throughout the entire United States and, and you know, make a list and then you know, write down what, what those schools have in terms of uh, educational opportunities, financial aid opportunities, um, email the questions to counselors. We all have contact your recruiter pages, so you can just reach out to the recruiters from your area. Um, and that's what we're here to do is really to answer your questions, put you in contact with resources um, through our financial aid offices, housing offices, um, just to make sure you're getting all the information so that you can actually apply, get admitted and enroll. So for the students, we, we may have some family members, of course, you know, in the group, but take ownership of this process. It, you, it really is your process. It's your responsibility. We want to be here to help and to advocate for you and you have your counselor support, but it really is your process and we want you to really dive in deep and be sure that you're finding the best fit for yourselves. There's plenty of colleges out there, right, to do research, um, but there might only be a good handful of them that you'll ultimately apply to that make the best fits. Um, be careful about ED. Um, there's no reason to overapply. Uh, there might be no reason to underapply. You know, keep your options open and available to you and understand what the early decision process is like and how it may help or hurt, right? Limit you in your um, experience. And then if there are parents, um, I usually encourage you since we're the same age to take a step back in this process and allow your student to take ownership. Really allow them and encourage them and support them um, to try to um, obviously um, 
you know, celebrate and, um, and dismiss some, you know, difficulties. Um, please have financial conversations early in this process. There is no more disappointment than a student who obviously is applying to institutions where there is um, concern financially at home and you don't have that conversation early enough. So those would be my pieces of advice for you in the process and good luck, of course. I'll be real quick, uh, echoing what everyone said, um, and especially Danielle's last point is always mine. Talk to each other right after this. Go and talk to each other about finances. Be honest about them. Be realistic about them. We spend a lot of this month having really hard conversations with families. So that is my advice. And also, breathe. You're going to find the right place. So many schools want you. You're fantastic. You're wonderful. We know it's been a weird year. We've been in the weird year, too. It's all going to be okay. Michelle, that was perfect to end. And I'll just add, have some fun. This college process, search process should be a little bit of fun too. So we hope that you enjoy it as you close out tonight. Um, answer a, a quick four question survey uh, with some feedback. That would be awesome. There's still one whole hour of these programs. So we hope that you enjoyed this format and you sign up for more sessions. The session was recorded and the recording will be available at strivescan.com slash FRHSD. Have a great one, everyone, and best wishes with your college search. Bye-bye.